Thanks for listening to the Youthology Podcast with Jeff Grinnell. Be sure to check out all of our available resources on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or online at youthology.com. Now, let's jump into the podcast. Thank you for joining us on the Youthology Resources Podcast. I am so excited about the topic this week. As a matter of fact, the topic that we are covering this week could be one of the most exciting top... Uh, okay, hold it. Uh, let me restart. Maybe it's not the most exciting topic, but I believe it could be one of the most valuable and the most important things that we deal with on this podcast. It is really simple. The podcast this week is dealing with the youth leadership meeting. Now, I say that because it was really an emphasis for me in my years of ministry. We, I, I would say if you talk to our youth leaders, we probably spent um, as much time planning and focusing on that meeting and the creativity that, that goes into that meeting as we did youth services, events, small group, whatever, okay? So it, it comes from a passion of mine. That's why we're dealing with it. But let me tell you another reason why I really want to deal with this topic on this podcast. Uh, the more I travel in the past, I'm going to say decade, I have watched as the importance and the value of a, le- of a youth leadership meeting, um, I've watched it spiral downwards. And it, it, for some reason, and I, I'm sure there are many reasons, I have some opinions on that, and maybe I'll put that in the manuscript a little bit, but for some reason, the youth leadership meeting has not received very uh, has not been received very well amongst youth leaders, okay? You know, the volunteers, as well as the youth pastor or youth leader themselves. And I think part of, part of that is just poor planning. Part of that is understanding the, uh, not understanding the value that, that we can get out of that meeting. So let's see if we can help in the next few minutes, okay? Thank you for joining us again. So, let me begin by talking about the frequency of that meeting. Just give me a couple of seconds here to deal with that. I think that the, the, the best scenario is an every other week, bi-weekly meeting, okay? Now, some of you are not even uh, meeting monthly, you're meeting quarterly, and you're thinking, whoa, bi-weekly? I don't know about that, man, that's awfully, that's a lot. We don't have any time. Well, uh, uh, some of you know how I feel about that, okay? You have the same amount of time as I did when I was a youth pastor, and if the Lord tarries, as the next generation is going to have too. It's 24 hours in a day. It's all about emphasis. It's all about what is my uh, focus? What is my priority, right? We did it on a weekly basis. Yeah, uh, we did it on a weekly basis. And there was no kickback from our team. As a matter of fact, when we had talked about moving it to a biweekly and a monthly uh, there were several on my team who were like, no, 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 man, why would we do that, right? Because of the value add that it brought to the team. So let me just say in frequency, obviously you need to make a decision to do what's best for you, but I'm telling you, I don't believe that you can get as much out of the meeting as you want, as you need to, if you are not meeting at least on a biweekly basis, okay? So what does the meeting look like? We begin our meeting with relationship. So people were coming in. There was always a soft start. Let's say it started at six o'clock because it was different times. But let's say it started at six o'clock. There were people coming in at quarter till, maybe even 5.30, bringing food in and uh, conversation in. And, you know, the young adults who didn't have anything to do were coming. And sometimes maybe a little bit later, uh, the uh, adults that were coming from uh, dropping kids off or getting babysitters or coming from work. You know, so we always had a soft entry that, that began around six-ish, okay? Then we would kick things off with a meal, with conversation, with relationship, because we, we wanted to be a family. If we were going to lead a family, we had to be a family, right, as a leadership team. So that was really important. Then we always would begin meetings with wins. Man, you have got to begin meetings with wins. Wins add so much value to the team. I've watched wins turn the attitude of a leader. I've watched wins bring up the like the vibrancy, the bring bring a vibe and a culture to the to the whole youth leadership team. When one leader shares a, a conversation they had with a student, whether that was in in the church setting or at school or after one of their uh, you know sporting events or. 
um, a track meet or at, at, a, at a, 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 a drama event, you know, wherever these kids are, and for them to show up and, and to share the wins of their relational capital, you know, outside of just the altars and the prayer time and how last week's youth service went or whatever, right? So let there just be a, a, a time when the wins are, uh, are, are shared amongst the team. I think it brings unity. I think it brings accountability for maybe the leaders who aren't seeing their relationship, you know, capital with, with the students on a regular basis. And another leader shares how they took them out, you know, uh, for a donut and coffee or something. And then another leader feels that accountability and is like, man, I, I need to do that too. Right. And it brings that, uh, that, that peer accountability into the, into the wins. I think the wins show everyone that God is doing something. So, um, uh, set aside a, a, a direct amount of time, you know, 15 minutes, you know, it doesn't have to go a half an hour or whatever. That, I think that's really important. Then the next thing that you need to cover is the calendar or assignments. So we would always look at what is going on in the next uh, few minutes. Um, you know, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. We'd always look, take that amount of time, not too much to look at what's going on in the next month or even the next couple of weeks. We would um, already have the annual calendar out to them, so we don't have to cover things you know, uh, too far in advance, but there may be assignments coming up for an event coming up that weekend. Or maybe we're doing something with the small groups that, uh, that happen to meet throughout the, the week for us, and we need to make a change, or we need to you know, have a, another leader cover for... Those are the kind of things we want, we would take care of with the calendar and assignments to make sure everything was covered. Okay. And then, of course, the big things like, you know, convention or camps or fine arts or whatever, you know, all of that stuff could be covered in that moment. That brings clarity and unity to the, to the team also, doesn't it? Then we would always spend time in development. This was my favorite part. Well, one of my favorite parts in the meeting, to be honest, the youth leadership meeting was my favorite, but I love the development time because now as a professional and you as a youth leader are the professional to your volunteers, right? To your team. Now what I could do is begin to say, what does my team need? What do these leaders need? Whether they're adult leaders or student leaders, uh, because we would bring student leaders into the same kind of setting also on a monthly basis. So how can I help them uh, do de leadership development. Maybe I want to look at traits of uh, the millennials or the Gen Z. Maybe I want to look at how to communicate to students. Maybe I want to look at family dynamics. Maybe one week I'm going to spend role playing with how to pray for a student to receive salvation, you know, or wh whatever. So all of these kind of trainings, those trainings could take place in a lot of different forms. Maybe the training uh, takes place with uh, a TED talk or a YouTube video. Maybe you're gonna watch a series of videos on a specific topic that you've chosen for the youth leadership team. Maybe you're gonna go through a book together or articles on a topic together. You know, one of my favorite things to do is to bring in a guest, bring in a, a superintendent of a school or a principal or a coach or a teacher or a guest at the church that, that uh, has just ministered at the church that we could bring into the youth leadership meeting. All of those kind of things impact the development of the, your leaders in a dynamic way, okay? Um, uh, and then let me finish with this. So uh, aside from the relationship and the meal and the wins and the calendar and the leadership development, the last thing that we would always do together was pray. And that required some time. That required thought and planning also. We would set aside at least a half an hour. There were times when we went longer with our prayer so that we could get into intercession and, and not just like doing popcorn prayer in a, in a group or in a circle, but we could get into intercession and praying over and praying with um, each other for things. Maybe uh, one month we would spend a couple of meetings on praying over a specific thing that's going on in the youth ministry. You know, maybe bullying or broken families or a suicide, a rash of suicides. And so we would conquer that area, would sit on that area for a while. I would love to teach on prayer at times. We would do small groups at times. 
So there's so many different ways. You could do bring worship into it with an acoustic or a playlist, right? So think of the different creative ways that you can bring prayer into it because what that did was brought unity on the team. That brought this encouragement to the team. It, like the winds, it showed that God was doing something when we would share the praise reports of how God is moving through our prayers, okay? So, hey, that's a quick look at the youth leadership meeting and uh, I hope this has been a blessing to you. I know for some of you that don't put much time into this meeting, you need to take some of these things and maybe put some more work into it, put some of your own thoughts into it. But this is critical to taking the youth ministry to the next level, okay? So, hey, thank you for joining us on the Ethology Resources Podcast. You know where to find us. All you need to do is go to uh, the website at youthology.com. And you'll find all of our formats there where you can watch this, listen to this, and read this. Or if it's easier for you, just go to our social media. If you go to our social media, you'll see it right down there. All of our socials slash uh, Jeff, forward slash Jeff Grinnell. And go to the link tree. The link tree takes you everywhere, right? Some of you know what that is. So the link tree will take you to purchase the new book and resource that we have out. It will take you to the YouTube and the iTunes and into youthology.com where you can read this manuscript coming up this week, okay? Again, thank you for joining us on this podcast dealing with the youth leadership meeting. God bless you. Have a great week. Here's your next.